This is Lou Dobbs Tonight. News, debate, an opinion, an independent view. Here again, Kitty Pilgrim. Well, joining me tonight, two of the nation's foremost authorities on the economy. From San Francisco, we're joined by Joseph Stiglitz. He's a professor of economics at Columbia University, Nobel Prize winner for economics in 2001, also co-author of The Three Trillion Dollar War. And from Washington, we're joined by Robert Kuttner, co-editor of the American Prospect magazine and author of The Squandering of America, How the Failure of Our Politics Undermines Our Prosperity. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on, on a night like this. We really, really appreciate your expertise. We've heard a lot of uh, discussion in the last few days, um, and many people drawing analogies to the Great Depression, the worst global financial crisis since the Great Depression. Joe, let me start with you. Um, is, this, is this too much, or do you think this is accurate? Well, it is clearly uh, the worst financial crisis that we've had since the Great Depression. In some ways, it's more complex than the Great Depression because there, it was just simply banks failing. Now we have these very complicated products. We didn't bail out insurance companies then. We weren't going into mortgage companies. Uh, the other hand, though, we know a lot more how to manage the economy, and so this financial crisis should not turn in to a depression. We know how to prevent it. On the other hand, we've seen some very bad mismanagement of our economy, and if we don't do the right thing, we could get that. It's very tricky times. Um, are we doing the right thing? Bob, what's your assessment? Well, I think we have not been doing the right thing uh, until now, because what we've had for uh, about 10 years is a policy of deregulating anything that Wall Street wants to invent and not paying attention to what these toxic products really were, not paying attention to the leverage ratios, uh, not paying attention to uh, whether these products were adding anything to the real economy. Now, since subprime came apart in the summer of uh, 2007, we've seen the Bush administration lurch from one ad hoc bailout uh, to another. And, uh, you know, people who wanted the government to invest in this thing or that thing uh, used to be accused of wanting to pick winners and losers. So here you have the Treasury Secretary with no degree of transparency whatsoever saying, uh, Fannie Mae, yes. Lehman Brothers, I don't think so. AIG, no, maybe yes. And uh, this is not good policy. Now, finally, they're talking about a more systematic approach of having an agency like the Reconstruction Finance Corporation of the uh, New Deal era recapitalize some of the economy. I think that that's good, but you have to combine it with re-regulation because otherwise you're going to have the same abuses all over again. Right. Actually, we were, we were um, there was talk on Wall Street today of, of this um, Secretary Paulson considering creating, creating a repository for banks' bad debt. Um, uh, Joe, what do you think of that? It, it, it rallied the market, just the, the mere discussion of it. Um, what do you think of that? Do you think it's necessary? Um, what's your assessment? Well, uh, it may be necessary, but you cannot understand why the market is railing. Uh, these, this, this uh, new entity, which is going to be owned by the taxpayer, is picking up all these bad assets that nobody in the private sector is willing to pay for. So we're going to become the residual owner of everything bad in the economy. The reason that the markets are so enthusiastic, I think, is that they are very hopeful that we will overpay for these assets. And so, in effect, it will be a non-transparent subsidy to the financial system, the financial sector, and uh, we're going to, the taxpayer is going to wind up paying hundreds of billions of dollars, and that money is going to go into the pockets of the owners of these companies. That's why there's such enthusiasm. We had um, great discussion uh, about this. Uh, House conservative Republicans today actually raising issues opposing the federal bailouts. Um, we do have comments from the from Florida's Republican congressman, um, and he he's a House Financial Services Committee member, Tom Feeney. This is what he had to say. When, as was said earlier, you have privatized all of the risk taking and encouraged people to take risks in, in search of higher returns and higher rewards for Wall Street executives, and you have socialized on the back of hardworking, prudent, and responsible taxpayers all of the uh, all of the risk. 
Now, the criticism is that you're bailing out Wall Street. You're not bailing out Main Street. Many have suggested that, that some kind of uh, instrument should be made for people who are holding mortgages and that, that actually something would be more beneficial for helping people who are in distress over their mortgages. And yet, now you have something for banks. Um, what's your assessment over bailing out Wall Street over Main Street? Or have we reached the point where the entire system has to be shored up no matter what way it has to be done? Joe, let's start with you. Well, I, I think we should have begun long ago with uh, the source of the problem, uh, which is the, the large number of defaults. We need to help uh, low-income Americans stay in their homes. It doesn't do any good for uh, these foreclosures. Uh, what do we want to do, create homeless people? Do we want people to just move around from one home to another? And when there's the foreclosures, the value of the property goes down. The president says, we don't have any money to do, to do that. And yet somehow he found $900 billion to bail out uh, all these various bailouts. So uh, that's where we should have begun. The other thing that we should begin uh, to do is, you know, we, we subsidize, in effect, uh, pay 50% of the real estate, uh, of the cost of real estate for high income Americans through tax deductions of interest and uh, real estate taxes, but we don't help low income people at all. What we really need to do is to provide a cashable tax credit that would help low income people stay in their homes, give them the same benefits that we're giving very rich people. That's an example where we can get both greater efficiency and greater equity in our, into our society. Mm -hmm. Bob, you know, I'd like to ask you, um, the Federal Reserve with five other international banks has, has just pumped an additional $180 billion into the global financial system. Do you think this is sufficient? No, I don't, because there is so much toxic, uh, bad stuff clogging the bloodstream of commerce because all during these years of speculation that regulators turned their back on, people were doubling down on bad bets. And the Fed is like uh, a doctor who's transfusing a patient that has a very serious, maybe even a terminal illness. You keep transfusing and it lasts for a day or two and then you have to transfuse again. Uh, I think Joe Stiglitz is right, <clears throat> excuse me, that we ought to start with uh, people who are being pushed out of their homes by these toxic subprime mortgages and if we're going to bail out Wall Street, we ought to bail out the little guy. American homeowners have lost uh, close to $2 trillion in the asset value of their homes. It's the biggest source of net worth for the typical American family. And if we're going to have to bail out Wall Street in order to keep the whole financial system from cascading into a general depression, we ought to at least bail out Main Street as well because it is consumer purchasing power, ultimately, that keeps the economy afloat or not. The reason the uh, stock market crash of 1929 turned into the Great Depression of 1932-33 was that the policymakers let unemployment rise, they let consumer purchasing power go down the drain. So the government can't just bail out Wall Street, it has to worry about everybody else if it wants to solve the problem. Joe, uh, I can't know you, ca you can't uh, solve this yeah. tonight, but do you think that we have enough to go around to solve this problem, and how long do you see this continuing? Well, I was going to say, Bob is a absolutely right, and one of the failures uh, of, of the Bush administration and, and the Fed is to think that they can solve with liquidity what is a gap in the balance sheet. These people have a negative <coughs> net worth, and you can't solve that by a balance sheet uh, uh, action. Uh, the, one of the critical issues here is that we've been squandering a lot of money on a war uh, in Iraq that's not getting us anywhere. You know, my book, Three Trillion Dollar War, that's bleeding the economy. So we can't continue to waste money uh, in Iraq uh, and bail out uh, all these uh, um, uh, AIG, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and keep the economy going strong without starting to print money which would in turn cause inflation. So we are, f we are going to have to face some important choices. Uh, that's why uh, uh, the leadership going forward is going to be very important. What are those choices that we're going to be making? Who is it that we're going to be bailing out? All these questions tonight. Thank you very much for helping us analyze the situation. Joseph Stiglitz and Robert Kuttner, thank you very much. Coming up, new